Pretty good one there, I believe. Come on, fish. I mean a tank. <laughs> yeah. So we're here at Table Rock, you know, I'm gonna call this more early summer. I mean, this is the time of year, especially when the water temperature starts, you know, you're pushing 84 to 85 degrees and these fish are really, really starting to get into their summertime pattern, but it hadn't been that far or that long ago that they were actually, you know, spawning in, in that post-spawn phase. So I'm still kind of trying to focus on spawning areas, but I'm really gonna start focusing more where you've got those deep channel swings close. I mean, I've got a big long gravel point that runs out here, but I've got a main river channel swing that hits this bank and basically swings all in front of this pocket. So it's just one of those places that uh, these fish will pull out of these pockets, they'll start grouping up and they'll really get set up on these points. The biggest thing that you know you gotta be aware of is you gotta get out here and spend some time with your electronics and, and look for bait, look for some cover, you know, whether it be brush piles man-made or rock or, you know, hard places, uh, you know, table rock, you don't have that much trouble finding hard places because the lake's pretty much just all rock and, and gravel, but uh, that's the big key is, is really focusing on these areas where you've got deep water close to these uh, areas that these fish would have spawned in, basically. Normally this time of year we would have a thermocline and that usually becomes the real key on this lake but this year due to the fact that we've had a lot of high water, a lot of rain, the thermocline just hadn't set up because they've been pulling so much water through this so it's really got the fish a lot more scattered out this year than they normally would be. This time of year normally that thermocline will set up somewhere in that 20, 24 to 30 foot zone and you can really just focus on that depth but right now from what I've been seeing there are fish, you know, anywhere from 24 to 40 or 50 foot, and uh, it really kind of makes it tough before that thermocline sets up. So that's the reason, you know, electronics become so critical. You know, whether you're looking for a thermocline or you're looking for fish or bait or something like that, that's the big key. Saw those on live scope. Like I said a while ago, there's just a little group of them out there on that point there in about 24 foot of water. But typically, you know, that's the beauty of Table Rock is you get out here on these gravel points and you're almost guaranteed you're going to catch spotted bass or, or, or smallmouth, but uh, the largemouth are going to relate to totally different stuff. They're going to be around more ledge, rocky stuff with cedar trees. They're going to be around boat docks and stuff like that. Look how fat that little spot is. He is a chunk. That's the thing that a thermocline, look at him right there. That's the thing that a thermocline does is it will keep those fish at, at, at a depth. You know, you won't have to, to fish so many different depths, but when they're in a thermocline, man, they can go anywhere they want to go. Pretty good one there, I believe. Come on, fish. Nice one. I think that's a big school of gizzard shad with some fish in there feeding on them. I mean, that fish, I never felt it bite. It just loaded up, and that's the reason it's so important to have the right action rod. I mean, this is Kara 417, same rod that I do a lot of cranking with. Gives you the opportunity to, to fight a big old fish like this. I mean, that is a tank right there, I'm telling you. An absolute tank. Do you look at the size of this old largemouth? Come on, darling. Get up here. I mean, a tank. Look at that! <laughs> Big fish do like little baits. I mean, a lot of people think you gotta be throwing something giant to catch a big one, but little bitty big bite, 2.8 pro swimmer, 
3 8 ounce big bite head and that is a beauty i mean that is a big old post spawn early summer fish and uh you know the big thing about it when you start fishing this time of the year is paying attention to shade lines and you know where the bait is and things like that i mean we're just outside of a spawning pocket these fish are starting to move out they're starting to really group up and uh man it isn't every day you catch one like that on table rock this time of the year but when you do it is awesome big old fish i pulled up to this dock and uh, i mean this is a perfect place you know there's a lot of different ways to catch them this time of year but i pulled up to this dock this school of gizzard shed you can see them right there was actually sitting on the corner of this dock in the shade and i could see a, a spot or two that looked like a bass in fact there's a couple good marks in them right now but uh Pulled up there, threw that little 2.8 swimmer in there, let it hit the bottom, just started winding it. And I mean, I never felt the fish bite. It just started loading, leaned back on it, and uh, there it is. But you can see those gizzards are moving quite a bit. I mean, the key though, this time of year, there they are again. But they just, they'll, they'll run up and down the shade line of this dock, usually early in the morning. And then after the sun gets up really good, a lot of times they just tuck back up under the dock. But early in the morning, when these fish are out cruising, feeding, you can catch some of them. When you look at this bank over here behind me, I mean, it, it all looks pretty flat, but I mean, just right here, there's a creek channel bend. So, you know, these fish have the ability to sneak up there, feed at night, feed in the shallows, but uh, when they need to ease off and get in a little bit deeper water, they've got a vertical ledge that's just, uh, you know, 40, 50 feet from where they're actually pulling up on that shallow or flatter stuff to feed. I mean, that largemouth was probably only in about 23, 24 foot of water up there, just kind of hanging out in the shade of that boat dock. That group of gizzards just slid on down this bank and Got out there on the end of that point and saw him out there again and threw the old swimmer back out there at him and got another one to commit and eat it. Feel like it's another pretty decent one. I do believe. Like I said, I mean, you can see the bend in that rod. I mean, when you're catching, oh, it's a big old catfish. it. But you can see the bend in that rod. I mean, if that was a big old large mouth, I had him whooped. Oh, whiskers, that gum you. Old catfish eat gizzard shad too. You know, bait back fish. Oh, whiskers. So basically this time of the year, you know, when I really start trying to look for these fish, early summertime offshore structure fish that are, uh, you know, post spawn, but really getting into their summer pattern is uh, I'm trying to look at these, you know, areas that are really, really close to deep water. And as you can see, I mean, right here is the main creek channel and there's a river channel. And this river channel swings right up against this whole stretch. But when you zoom in, you've got these fingers and these points that come out here that gives these fish a perfect place to set up. You know, these fish that have spawned back here in this shallow flat spawning pocket, they'll just start filtering out and they'll use this brake line to just move up and down. But the key places are gonna be, you know, anywhere you can find a little piece of cover, a piece of structure, a big rock pile or something like that, or pole timber. I mean, this place actually has a lot of pole timber out here off of, you know, the channel. There's not much, once you get up there on top of the break, but when you're out here off of the break, there's pole timber out here. So these fish can either suspend out in this pole timber or they can ease up here on these, you know, points and, and little ledges and feed. So that's the real key is always keep yourself in a position where you're not just fishing a big, wide open, vast, flat area, but you want to put yourself somewhere closer to deeper water and you're going to be way more successful. I and mean, that's the big key is, you know, when you pull up on these places and you've got balls of bait like that and you've got pole timber and, you know, you can see some fish suspended out here in these treetops. I mean, right there in that tree, there's a fish. There's a fish right there on that tree. 
I mean, there's a good group of fish here, a concentration, and you just got to kind of fish around until you figure out, you know, what it is that it's going to take to catch them. I mean, I'm going to throw a, a swim bait out here. I'm going to throw a, you know, a Ned rig, a hard head, a football jig, various things like that until I figure out what the fish really want to focus on and what I can catch them on the best. You know, a lot of guys when they when they think about spooning, you know, is the old slab spoon. And man, we used to, you know, really hop those spoons hard and jerk them way up off the bottom. But these flutter spoons, really, it's it's a pretty subtle deal. I mean, you pitch it in there, let it go all the way to the bottom, and then just kind of, you know, ease it up off the bottom, let it fall a little bit. And I mean, if they're there and and interested, they're going to get it. But just seeing some kind of structure in there under that boat lift. I don't know if it's an old boat lift laying there on the bottom or what it is, but you can see fish and bait. And... The lake just doesn't have as much cover in it as it used to. You know, used to this thing was full of cedar trees, full of full of big hardwoods, and a lot of that cover's really started to to go away. And I mean, these fish tend to really, really get on these boat docks when, when you get into the middle of the summer. There's that one was up off the bottom there. Another little spot. They weren't even quite keepers, but you're just as likely to pull up and catch a group that's 15 to 17 inches as 13 to 14 inches. A little better. Can be fun. Like I said, it's not my favorite way to catch them, but when they're biting it, it can definitely be fun. One of the big things too, you know, when I'm throwing a, uh, a flutter spoon, I mean, very seldomly does one come rigged in the package the way I'm gonna be happy throwing it. I always add a, a split ring on top of the flutter spoon, which most of them come with a split ring, but you can see I've got a little spro swivel right above the split ring. And basically what that does is it helps take that line twist out. You know, when you're throwing a spoon of any kind, it's gonna twist your line horribly bad, but you take that little, barrel swivel and put it on there and you're tying directly to the barrel swivel it'll take all that line twist out and uh, it actually makes the spoon fall in my opinion a whole lot better it just it it flutters more naturally than if you tie directly to that split ring oh another one just smoked it throwing it on a uh, 5172 it's basically that swim jig rod that medium medium heavy action falcon and this pattern will work anywhere. I mean, anywhere you've got marina boat docks, that's a little better. Anywhere you've got some marina boat docks. Feel a large mouth going now, indeed. Like I said, I mean, there's going to be days. I mean, if I was really looking to catch a big one right now, I'd probably dig in the box and, and pull out a four or five inch spoon. But I mean, just to get bit, catch a lot of fish, have a lot of fun, that little three inch, uh, just a Dixie Jet flutter spoon, three quarter ounce. Catch them all day long sometimes this time of year. So often these fish just, they tuck right down on the bottom, but you can see right there, there's a little school of bait out there at about 90 foot, and there's some fish in and around that school of bait right there. You can see that real bright mark that keeps coming in there. Got so much wave traffic, but right there is a fish for sure. Just one more way to catch them this time of the year. Not my favorite way by any means. I'd rather be dragging a big old football jig or something, but every now and then you gotta get the old fairy wand out. Good spot. This by far again is one of my favorite little spinning rods. It's a 4176 and I mean it just so much rod to fight them with. Just throwing a little big bite stick the new sensation stuff the new scented big bite sticks cut it down a little bit and uh catching a little 15 and a half inch or 15 inch quarter spot it's 
hot. It's the dog days of summer and uh, really enjoyed it. Hope you all enjoyed it too. And thanks for joining us for, for Falcon Rods Techniques. <laughs>